The man who got banned from Vegas for winning a million, $11 million. This is Mickey, a high stakes gambler who won $11.5 million gambling one night in Las Vegas. And wow. soon after, he was banned from nearly every casino here for making too much money. But if casinos let millions of people come to Vegas and lose all of their money, why won't they let you stay and win? Before we hear Mickey's story, I met up with high stakes slot machine addict Vegas. Oh my God, I watch Vegas Matt on TikTok all the time and it's sad let me just show you a vegas matt tiktok two thousand dollars of free play which i thought was very generous so i figured let's do thousand dollar a spin video poker why not so we're gonna do two one thousand dollar spins and we're gonna get dealt oh am i allowed to show this on stream oh f wait hold on twitch guidelines are different hold the f up i don't know if I'm i don't know if i'm allowed to show that on stream <laughs> Wait, let me just listen to it. We've Let's see gambling. if he loses money. So net net we lost. Okay, they lost four hundred dollars in a minute and a half. Okay. Well that's actually not a big loss. No, but he gambles so much money. This guy goes to Vegas every single day. I don't know if he lives in Vegas, but every day he uploads new TikToks in new outfits where he is just gambling. Matt to find out why he spends thousands every day playing slots. Boys, what are you well and known? Slot machines have the worst odds out of legitimately anything. For DGen gambling, huh? Why are we at the high limit section? Can't uh, win big unless you bet big. You know what I mean? Just took like two thousand. I mean, at the end of the day, you could only lose hundred percent of your money, right? So let's uh, give it a shot. So we're betting fifty dollars a spin. We need six of these balls. Oh, it's oh, 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 flag. Flag. come on! Oh. Oh. Are you addicted? Yeah, I mean, minus three hundred dollars in two spins. Oh my god, dude! I'll lose. Uh, Max, I'll lose in a night. Outside of my birthday, Max, I'd lose in a night at a casino would be like two hundred bucks, and I'd be pissed. He just lost two hundred dollars in a minute, and he's fine. Like not not upset. Like gambling away my mortgage payment, but I love this rush. Right after five straight losses, Matt won six free games, and then a sixteen. Yeah. Hundred dollar bonus. This does not happen all the time. But like I always say, you know, the only way you it doesn't happen all the time. It happens one out of every hundred times. I have not. I don't think I've ever walked out of the casino positive, except like one time. Like you will lose money all time. No gambler is up all time if they've been gambling for their whole life. Really, truly loses <laughs> if you quit. And five spins later. You no, know, I live by that. I live by that right there. Really loses <laughs> if you quit. Person who stopped gambling, loser. Person who keeps on gambling, winner. Not yet, but he'll be there. And five spins later, he was up another three thousand dollars. So is that still? Oh, no. <laughs> you guys seem pretty decent. He said yes. He's like, oh, I just have the magic touch. <laughs> let's just say I dabble in the slots. Uh, let's just say you hit the number, or you hit the fucking button at the right time. It's the same statistical odds every time. Nice. This is not bad, right? No, this is actually really good. <laughs> on slots, you usually lose everything a lot of times, but every once in a while, you win a ton. But yeah. I'm happy because, like, the other day we, hear, we were here, we lost $20,000. Within... <laughs> 20 grand? How do you say that casually? The other day we were here, I lost $20,000. I would cry. I would be bawling, dude. 20 G's unfazed. In 10 minutes, Matt was up three grand, and then he got Yo, hit he's with- still down 15,000 from yesterday. The few losses. We got absolutely nothing, so you just lost 200 bucks. I'm not feeling this. Let's just go a couple more spins, though, just in case Thousand. I would- And another big loss. And so we just lost a thousand bucks. A $200 oh, no. loss. Nothing, this is- Nah, here we, yeah, no, come on, Matt. Come on, Matt, you're gonna hit big soon. This machine is not hot. Matt, you're gonna hit big soon, trust. Yeah, this is, this is horrible. So we just lost 500 bucks. Will I quit? No. If you're on a roll and you're winning, you don't wanna quit because <laughs> you gotta, you gotta feed that roll. And if you're really getting wrecked and you're losing, you don't wanna quit because you're bound to start winning. Okay. So we've come <laughs> the... Oh my God, that was just, that was straight up literally the gambler's fallacy. Oh my God, he just literally, I, I is he, is he serious? Conclusion that just you never can stop. just never stop. <laughs> I feel like he's explaining the gambler's fallacy. The idea that when you're really up, you don't want to stop because you could be up more. And then when you start losing, you keep betting more 
but then you're due for a win, when in reality your odds of winning are the same every time, right? It's the same thing with, like, CSGO cases. Like, I watch CSGO. I used to watch CSGO opening cases a lot, and people would be like, the odds of getting a knife is 0.5%. So I bought 200 cases. We're going to get a knife. That's not guaranteed at all. The odds that you get one is pretty likely, right? Because you bought 200 cases at a 0.5% spin rate, right? But you could still walk out losing every single one, right? Because the odds of you winning every time is 0.5%. It doesn't go up. Golden opportunity in the distance that might just end his losing streak. Oh my God, get, jump on. Is it, did they leave this? They left it? Oh my God. Oh, they, they left this with 47 blues. When you hit this bonus, you're gonna get 47 free games. Oh. Okay. Good luck. Basically, some other less intelligent gambler had left this fat blue piggy. Yeah, some fucking smooth brain at the fucking, some dumbass, some fucking absolute idiot at Caesar's Palace just decided to fucking leave 47 blues on the piggy game. Ripe for the popping, which will give Vegas Matt here 47 free spins, which might just allow him to win the jackpot. $70,000? I feel like every fucking jackpot at a casino is a million bucks, though. And you never hit that shit. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, he hit it, he hit the big dollars. one, he hit the big bonus. whammy, put it all on black, put it all on black. For yeah. sure, yeah, that was a lot of fun. So we're up 50, $5,332. The sun's Go put that bitch on black, go put that bitch on fucking black. And Ramsey. then if it hits, do it again. Gambling back here. These guys were good. But before you go to your local casino and gamble your life savings on slots, I want to introduce you to Mike Malone. I lost 6K last weekend. Been going fucking bad. I flew to Sacramento to hear the story of how Mike ruined his life gambling. When did you start gambling? At what age? Well, you know, the gambling fascination started probably at the age of about eight. I remember my parents, you know, gambling. Eight? Eight years old? I a lot. I started doing poker tournaments when I was about 16. And then once I turned 18, there was a casino in town. It's called Jackson Rancheria Casino. That was 18 and up. So as soon as we found that casino, we started going there. And that's when the real gambling stuff pretty much started with me. And how does it progress over time? You know, when I started, it was it was small stakes. It was like $5, $10, you know, little home games, playing with the boys. You know, I was young when I started at 16, but when we were at the real casino at 18, got myself a job. So I had a little bit of money coming in. Six bucks an hour back then, so it wasn't right. much, but I didn't have any bills. Six bucks an hour. Well, this was, that was worth, $6 was worth more like 20 years ago. I'm young, I'm still living at home with my mom. So, you know, I take the money, try to go gamble. And it's just that high that you get when you get this easy money. You know, nobody wants to go to their nine to five job and work. Sure. You know, that, that's, that's the problem about gambling, you know. Okay. I remember there was times my dad, he would take me to Lake Tahoe. My mom doesn't know about this. And uh, it'd be late at night, you know, probably 12 in the morning. And he'd go in there and play blackjack. I'd sleep in the car. And he'd come check on me, you know, every couple hours, make sure I was still alive. So, you know, the gambling addiction, I guess you could say it runs in the family. Ran into my, my big problem. I was uh, about 21 years old. I found out what online gambling was. So I started- Dude, uh, online gambling? Brutal. Like online slots? That's, that's the shit that's banned on Twitch. Online slots. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. That shit's- that shit's fucking addicting, right? Like I, it, when when you when you start spinning like this, like these, like the stake slots and everything, like that's addicting. Blackjack. I was getting lucky, you know. I turned my five hundred dollars in a couple thousand. So here I am, twenty one years old. I have a, a ten thousand dollar credit card. I just got a brand new apartment. I got a ninety nine Eclipse convertible. So I was on top of the world at the time. I was working at Olive Garden, waiting tables. You know, I'd work the morning shift. I'd maybe make fifty dollars in chips a night. Finally, I just said, you know, what's why am I gonna come here for fifty dollars when I can just go home and gamble on a sports game and make a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks real quick? So I quit my job at Olive Garden. Did that for about two years. Ooh, wow. Sports betting is is mm, I don't think sport. What's like the worst version of gambling? Slot machines. Because your odds are the worst, and they're the most addicting. Slot machines are the most addicting because you're just waiting for a high. I would say slots is worse. Then it goes, I don't want to say horse betting, but horse betting is, like, really bad. Like, betting on horse on horses is, like, you're going to fucking lose most of the time. Or you're just not going to get a good return. Craps is pretty bad. Your lowest odds, I could look that up. Those are the worst. The best odds of winning is Blackjack, Craps, Baccarat, and Roulette. The worst odds 
uh is wheel of fortune kino the big 10 wheel and then other slots so i'm out the cage right now i got more than a uh, 4k why do you need my id no nah, just catch me out she's on the phone about my five thousand dollar win you guys don't make me sign anything when i lose money all right pay me out please please it's five thousand dollars anyway he's being a fucking dickhead they make you sign shit when you win sometimes because they have to fucking tax you on your winnings most casinos won't make won't make you sign something unless you win 10 grand. But like at the end of the day, you have to pay taxes on casino winnings. Most people don't know that. If you win a million dollars on a slot machine, you're getting taxed 45% on it, 49% on it. Your state and fucking federal tax is taking that money. This, this is life of a, of a gambler, bro. Fuck, dude. You guys are a piece of shit. You know, honestly, like, I deserve better, dude. The online transition to me going to Reno and Lake Tahoe, I felt like that's where I started losing. The casinos okay. start giving you free rooms. They start paying your gas to come, and you, you think you're on top of the world. I just woke up, and Thunder Valley called. Ooh, eating today, boy. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. That just seemed like, like some high schooler flex from selling, like, jewel pods. Stop playing with me, boy. Y'all ain't even seen this money spread before, have you? Ten dollars a mango pod. Out here in Reno having a good time. You know how we do it. When I got a buzz, I gamble better. You gonna gamble, Daniel? Fucking, fucking twenty-five a gram. Twenty-five a gram. <laughs> seeing, seeing that shit. Oh my god, bro. I remember my friend. Like, yo, I mean, it's New Jersey. It's different because like weed's legal. But, like, bro, I remember when I was in high school before weed was, uh, le like, I never smoked weed in high school. I waited until I could fucking smoke, right? But I remember being in high school, and I had friends that sold weed for, like, $20 a gram. And I was like, bro, whoever's buying your shit, I at the time, I didn't know that was a scam because I never bought weed, right? So I didn't know what weed was worth. But, like, then when I actually started, like, eating edibles and, like, I went to a dispensary, I, like, know the value of marijuana. I did. I moved home. I started a landscape business. You know, now I'm running a six-figure business. I have seven employees. Life's good. That's I'm, awesome. You know, I'm really blessed, and things are good now. How much money do you think you ultimately lost in um, lifetime? I would say anywhere between 200000 and 300000 You know, I've gone broke probably over a dozen times. Risked my rent money to gamble a couple times. But, yeah, there's been a, a lot of bad times. Sure. Gambling will just tear you apart if you're not careful. These casinos aren't built on winners people get divorced people have lost the house cars you know Dude, you name it i've been in ac and i've seen i've seen a gambling addiction right i have friends that are addicted to gambling one of my friends the other night texted me he said i lost a thousand dollars in atlantic city i said don't go back he said i'm not i'm giving myself a two-month break or some shit right like he lost like a thousand dollars just casually in a day right like i have friends that are addicted to gambling but there's stages of addiction, right? There's people that like gambling. There's people that are addicted to gambling. And then there's people that'll lose their house for gambling, right? That's a whole nother level. I've been to Atlantic City where I've gambled and I've seen people in the hallways crying, right? Hands in their, hands in their fucking face. They probably lost their fucking, their, th all of their money, right? That, that they have, like they have nothing. Years later, do okay. you still gamble? I gamble every single day. The first thing I do when oh, I, <laughs> I wish there was, yeah, I don't know why he just told this whole story about being addicted to gambling and now he's saying he still gambles. What I was going to say, though, is there should be something at casinos like they have at online casinos where you can say, don't let me in here for whatever amount of time, right? Like, I think when you go into a casino, you should have to scan your ID and you should be able to opt out of being able to be allowed to go into a casino. They would never do that, but on, like, online casinos, they do. Like, my online gambling account, now my sports betting. My sports betting account is still open, right? But my online casino account is closed for the next three months. I, I, per I timed myself out. One night, I went disabled, and I can't use it. Even if I want to unlock it, I can't use it, right? They should do something like that in person. It would help people. But they don't care because they want to win fucking the, the fucking Borgata in Atlantic City wants all your fucking money. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Yeah, so so if, if I lose a thousand dollars, it's it's done. If I'm 16 but I look 21, would they let me in? You're allowed to walk into any casino, no matter what your age is. You can't step on the floor.
if you're five, you're allowed to walk around in Atlantic City. You just can't go on the floor. You're not allowed on the gambling floor unless you're 21. I have uh, anxiety still to this day, and I think uh, it could be stemmed from gambling. And when you lose, that's when it kind of hits you hard sometimes. And, you know, you might get depressed, and then it goes away. You know, the next week comes, and life goes on, you know? And as Mike tried to warn against the evils of gambling, the casino security did not want him to finish his story and told us to leave and stop recording immediately. Casinos are evil. Casinos are evil. Turn it off now. <laughs> Bro, casino security guards piss me off sometimes, though. No lie. They're like suck. They're like sometimes they're such dickheads. Like I know that. Like I I I know their job can be annoying as fuck because they're dealing with drunk people who are like mad because they lost money. But like I've had casino security guards come up to me and just be the rudest fucking people. ID please. ID please. Relax, okay. Give me a minute. I'm spinning a fucking slot here. Let me get my wallet. Acting like, acting like they're about to fucking handcuff me right there. <laughs> Casinos are evil. He's not recording. Yes. Mike was a clear example of just how bad gambling can be if you take it too far. Or was he simply just not made for the game? I met up with one of the best gamblers of all time, Mickey, who has been banned from nearly every but casino. But Mickey wins money from poker. I Like, doesn't he win money? Uh, poker's different, right? Like, it's not like blackjack. In Vegas, after winning 11... I'm pretty sure he did. I'm pretty sure he knows how to count cards, too. One gambling session. I'm not cheating. And if I was cheating, they definitely would have caught me by now. Then I must be doing something the casinos thought was impossible. I do have a plan that could bring every casino to their knees. Um, and I may pull the trigger on this and watch these casinos burn. And Mickey, how many people are banned from casinos like you? In the fashion in which I am, there's only been four in history. My single biggest winning session was 11 million five hundred. Oh my god, dude. Twenty six thousand dollars. How much money did he walk in with, though? Like, there's no way you're like. Here's the problem. People see this and then they think, oh, I could walk in with a hundred dollars and make 11 million. No, he probably walked in with like 200k and then made it into 11 million. Right. And oh my god, they gave him a million. They gave him 11 million in cash. If I won, if I won more than twenty grand at a casino, I would say, "Do you guys have direct deposit?" <laughs> like, I would not, I would not be, I would not feel safe walking around with more than ten k in cash. Like, they're gonna, somebody's gonna rob your ass. You're gonna walk out of the casino with fucking eleven million in bags. Average out to a net profit winner of a million dollars a week for like quite a, quite the amount of time. Grew up with my grandparents. Oh my god! If I saw him win it. Yo, a hundred percent. I know they walk, they bring you into a back room and then walk you out because people will try to rob you in AC. I don't know about Vegas, but in Atlantic City, I've seen somebody win like 60 grand and they just disappeared. They go into a back room, they sign a bunch of papers and then security walks you to your car because somebody will fucking, oh my God, dude, just imagine you're, you see somebody win 80 grand, you're down 40 grand. You see him walk into his car with a bunch of cash. Just fucking steal that shit. Like, I, like somebody's going to rob you. Who spent all their time in New York City card rooms. So my entire like childhood and upbringing was just around cards and high stakes gambling. Started going to Vegas once a week just to like party and be a degenerate and have fun. And I became a profitable gambler. One thing led to another, and then I became one of Vegas's biggest winners of all time. I won a million dollars for Mike Malak, Logan Paul, and Ryan Garcia on, on actually on one of their YouTube episodes. Uh, I made money for Lil Baby, Rod Wave. I'm never giving them money. I'm sorry. I don't if I'm that good at gambling and that good at at just poker and counting cards or whatever the fuck he plays I'm not giving Logan Paul a million dollars. I'm going to keep the mill. I'm going to buy a fucking Lambo and then I'm going to fucking drive that bitch around. Why is he giving people money? K. Osiris, 2K Baby, Lil Keed, rest in peace, Drewski, Suicide Boy. So I learned that you can negotiate with every casino, contingent on your buy-in and, and other factors. So it went like this, I had 200 bucks, I sat down at a blackjack table for $25 a hand. I ended up taking the 200 of 5K. I stopped at 5K and I took a break. I came- <laughs> Yo, his, no, that has to be luck. Dude, walking in, I, I walk in with $200 into a casino. I lose that bitch almost immediately. And I know how to play blackjack. How the fuck he make two hundred dollars into five grand? Came back and I played a little more with the five k. Turned into thirteen k. Took another what? Another break. Played the 13. 13, I ran it up to twenty six thousand. I took another break. I played with the twenty six thousand and I ran it up to something like one hundred twenty five thousand. Bro, there's no way. There's no, he. People keep saying card counting. 
Dude, card counting isn't like the movies. It's not Zach Galifianakis from Hangover with the fucking numbers around his head, knowing what card's coming out. Card counting is just knowing if there's a higher chance of having high cards or low cards in a deck. And it only really works on low fucking sh low deck uh, shoes. If you have a six deck shoe with fucking 300 cards, you're not going to know. With six other people fucking sitting with you. But I really had nothing left to lose. It was only a $200 buy-in. When I'm at the 125k mark, I went to another casino and I negotiated higher limits. I turned the 125 into 350. And I turned the 350 into 800. Do you have a background? See, that's from poker. Poker motherfuckers will run up money like, like nothing. Like statistics, math. I think it really was just in my blood. It's like what I grew up with. The same like some of the top musicians or the top athletes. They were born possibly, you know, like with an above average ability. And they study. <laughs> okay. <coughs> All right, let's settle down here, buddy. Let's just say I let's just say I was born with an above average ability to play blackjack. Like, uh, Blair thinks he's him. I mean, he kind of is him in the fact that he's made eleven million dollars at a casino, but. Like, and nevertheless, dude, it, it's not, you're not a genetic freak for winning money at a poker table. They just kept, like, working and cultivating to perfection or close to it as they can get. When you're gambling Maybe in his Vegas. his parents were hustlers. Shut the fuck up. It's full-time, making millions and losing millions. Are you addicted at the time? No. Well, I think there's a difference between being addicted and being an addict. I would say that- I would never be able to gamble. Dude, I don't care how good I was at gambling. Imagine sitting down at a blackjack table- and just putting $50,000 in chips. And just letting it go. No. <laughs> That's too much of a risk. Like, I, like I, the max I could bet in a hand on blackjack and not... I would be upset if I lost, but not die like $500 one time. And if I lost, I'd be in my bag. Like, in my bag. A casual gambler, a social gambler, there's a hard gambler, which is what I ended up being, and a hard gambler, which is usually hard to tell the difference between a hard gambler and a gambling addict. They both exhibit all the same character traits. And the difference between the addict and the hard gambler is that the hard gambler can stop and stay stopped with the right external force. So if my girlfriend says, hey, I'm going to leave you if you don't leave this gambling table and make dinner, and the same situation happens to the gambling addict sitting next to me, I'm the only one out of the two of us making it to dinner. The addict's going to stay behind and lose his relationship. Addict's going to stay by behind and lose his relationship, but he's going to be fucking, he's going to be fucking rich at that, he's going to be rich at that fucking table, though. He's going to be, He'll be fucking truck. He do for a win. He do for a win though. When Mickey gambled here full time before being banned, surely do for a win. This would treat him like a king, enticing him to stay here 24 seven in the hopes of him losing millions here at these tables. What would they do for you? Would they throw a jet your way? Yeah. Give you some pretty ladies to give you some sushi. Throw a jet your way? Are you fucking kidding me? Plane or what? Yeah, they gave me a 200 passenger jet for myself, and I can use it as often as I want, as many days. I'm going on that bitch alone. They, if the casino gives me a 200 passenger jet, I'm going on that alone and I'm running up and down the fucking aisles the entire time. I'm just going to be slumped on that fucking plane. I want to go anywhere I want with it. They let me. Ah, uh, uh, wait, no, that's a waste of fuel, though. All right, I'd have to bring people. That would be an actual waste. That would be like expenditure. That would be like an expenditure of like. 400 cars of fuel in a year for me to fly one time. I have a residency in all the villas. Another casino gave me a Rolls Royce. They furnished one of my penthouses, VIP access to everything. Oh and they're mine. God, they go, well, we spent one, two, three, four million dollars on amenities for him. He might yeah. lose 10 million and they leave as a winner six million. So for them, you know, it's like an investment. But unfortunately for them, it never paid off. I never lost it all back. <laughs> So, what are your thoughts on the whole online gambling scene right now? I've spoken to every owner of every online casino in the world, and they all want to make a deal. They all like understand that I have that I would have the highest conversions of new players. Every one of them has, has offered me like unbelievably substantial money. <laughs> See, but he doesn't play slots. That's what they would want him to play. The reason he's not going to go into those stake.com things is because he's a blackjack poker guy. He's not a fucking... Let me sit down and roll a fucking thousand dollar slot. <laughs> Every contract has gotten so far where right before signing, I say I'm only signing this if you allow me to live stream me looking at the vulnerabilities and auditing your company. And that's the exact moment that the contracts seem to stop going back and forth and just die out. So I would take by process of deduction that they're fearful that I'll 
expose them for immoral, unethical, or unfair advantages against the player. I have no interest. I think they should have that at casinos, in-person casinos. When you sit down at a slot, they should have the vulnerabilities and the odds of winning, like the odds of spinning a fucking bonus, the odds of winning a certain set. They don't have that, though. I would, I, you could probably figure it out, uh, it, like online or something. But when you go to a casino, like you don't know how what what the odds of hitting this slot is. Promo on my Instagram. I've never done it. I've never done paid promo. I've bro, the legend, the best gambler in the world, bro. You're the man. I learned bro. a lot from this man. He's more really? than a mentor. He's more than a gambler. He did that bottle of water right there was twenty dollars at the fucking gambling scene. You know the biggest thing that pissed me the fuck off. And we're gonna watch a video on tipping culture later today. Dude, last time I went to AC, I bought a tall boy of Michelob Ultra from a fucking, uh, like, concession stand. Because the fucking, the, the cocktail waitresses were not, were not walking to me. I was there for three hours. They didn't show up to me one time. I bought a tall boy of Michelob Ultra. Guess how much it was? At a liquor store, it's, it's like $4. 15 bucks for a beer. Not even at a bar. A can of beer. $15. She handed me the can and then asked for a tip. I said, lady, you just scanned. I didn't say that. I would, I would not be rude. But it asked me for a tip. I said, you just scan this, bitch. I'm not giving you a tip. Right? I, I tip well. When I go to restaurants, I'll tip 25%. I'll tip 30% if it's really good. Right? Especially at bars, I'll tip bartenders really well. I'll tip Uber, Uber drivers, Uber Eats. Right? But if you scan one item for me and then request a tip, I'm not tipping you. Was at gambling at one of the few casinos in Vegas that he wasn't banned from yet. All right, we got 500. Who's gonna be 2,500? I'll do the gambling. You be my coach. How about that? Whatever you want. When you come to the casino, are you playing any of these games? Slots? Yes, sir. Nah, never. And they're a huge disadvantage to the player. You are statistically likely to lose nine, roughly 98% of the time. Exactly. So you're always running Slots at a net negative. Suck. And it was time to test Mickey's skill and see if he could make me unfathomable riches with only $500. He's my coach. All right, can I see your IDs first? Are you 30? Am I 30? 30? Well, you look like that. Damn, that kind of hurt. And so we warmed up with Pagao Poker, which is quite literally designed for people so drunk they can't make logical bets. We have Ace High, which beats her Queen High, and then we have Two Pair, which beats her No I have no idea how to play this. I've never seen this game in my entire life. Blackjack to make some real money. So why did you hit on the 16? What's the strat there? After a few more games of Blackjack, making the statistically correct hand, we were up. 1,300 and like 10, because we also chipped out a bunch. We nearly quadrupled our money. What are What is our end goal right now? Uh, to 5X, so we're trying to take that 5 and after a few tense games of blackjack and baccarat that they would not let us record sadly we did not lose everything in fact how much did we win we 5x we got 2500 <laughs> the point how like how is bro like gambling like dude playing baccarat isn't a skill game you can do skilled bets but like it's fucking baccarat like how or baccarat how the fuck is he like always winning. The point of this was to show that we lose all our money, but sadly, Mickey's too good here. It's exactly what we did. We stuck to schedule and we won 2,500 from 500 just as we planned. But for the average person gambling, that's probably not gonna happen, right? And that's why I was a little nervous to like play. I just, I don't want people to think that it happens for everybody and it, it happens won't. all the time. I don't want, I don't want people to see this and then be like, I'm gonna go spend my last 500 because it'll become 2,500. Way more likely that their last 500 becomes zero. If the game's supposed to be 50 50, then every player should win half the time and lose half the time. It makes perfect sense. But in real life, what happens is almost every person who plays Baccarat loses. How are they all lifetime losers in a game that should always make them break even? It's because the house is rigged. How is the house rigged? I don't want to share that information. Okay, so these are exploits you found but are not publicly known? Correct. The casino's pocketing. He did share it. I watched a podcast episode where he shared why Baccarat's rigged. He talked about how one time the card that was played was different than the card on the computer, and it showed that they were, like, messing with the cards that were being played and the cards on the PC, and then how they were doing the payouts and shit. It was, like, a long explanation. But he said that, casino, like, Baccarat, Baccarat, they have to, like, fudge with this shit. Like, I would agree with him that some Baccarat tables are probably rigged because they have to fuck with the numbers, right? Because they don't want to ever have 50-50 odds because then you can win just based on skilled bets, right? Because you could just always double your bet if you lose. But if you're playing a game like Roulette, the reason that casinos win is because of the two green numbers, right? Because then it lowers your odds from 50-50 to, like, 48%, all right? Or, or some shit like that, 47%, whatever it is, right? If there was only black and red on a roulette table, then you would win half of the time.
you would always walk out almost even all time. The next, but in real life what happens is they collect 5% commission and the players still lose anyway, which shows that the game is not 50-50. You think the casinos are an evil business by nature? I couldn't say anything more verbatim and more accurate. I think they're evil, sinful, dirty, dark places that are only built to destroy people in their lives. I think it, absolutely nobody should gamble. And if they're gonna gamble, despite my very clear warning, do not gamble, I think what they should do is they should look at their budget and say to themselves, what would I spend on an eventful night out? I don't think nearly hardly anything positive has ever came out from gambling, but immense, immense damage, pain, and hardships have. In fact, Mickey even started a non-profit to help gambling addicts like Mike Malone. Stop now, playing with me. What is Shaking Hearts, your organization that helps Gambling addicts and drug addicts do. What it does exactly is you, when you go to our Instagram, you send a DM. In the DM, we're gonna provide you a link, and the link gives you an opportunity to put a little more specific information for your exact scenario. And depending on whether you select mental health or drug addiction or gambling addiction, you get paired with a professional from that exact top, and we help facilitate whatever it takes to get you the help. So we do everything totally free of charge. Everyone that wow. works there is a volunteer, and I was just really happy to be able to create something to just give back. Wow. You shouldn't gamble. You're not built like him. He is him. Is that accurate? <laughs> I would like to say it in more humble words, but sure. Go follow Mickey, Mike Malone, and Vegas. Bro, whenever I see people with eyelid tats, I, I'm always like, they're badass. Because if you have the, if you have like the, the pain tolerance to get your eyelids tattooed, you gotta be a fucking, you gotta be a fucking goat. Jeez.